Over the past few weeks, we have released several smaller feature improvements and updates in the Thrive Architect plugin for WordPress. And here I want to give you a quick rundown through what's new. The first feature I want to present is the multi-select feature. Now, if you're a previous Thrive Content Builder user, you might remember that this was a feature in Thrive Content Builder and we've brought it back in Thrive Architect. The way it works is that you can press control or command on your keyboard and then select multiple elements. And as you see, this puts you into multiple select mode. Now you can select any element, including like buttons. You can also select container elements, such as this background section. And the thing you need to know is, so what you can do, let me demonstrate here. Let's say we select these two paragraphs and remove them below the button like this. So what you can do is you can move things. What we can also do is if we select this container and this button, we can move elements that are separate from each other and move them in between somewhere like this. So you can select any element and you can then move them anywhere you want. You cannot do any editing. So you can't do any style editing or anything like that while you're in multiple select mode because of course the possible style changes are different depending on what you've selected. But that's basically it. You hit control or command, you select multiple elements, and then you move them around as you please. Next is a small change, but important to know about the more tag is now an element. So the more tag is what you can insert inside a blog post to tell WordPress where to cut off the preview of that blog post in your blog list view. And it used to be an icon here in the inline editing, which was easy to miss or misinterpret. And so we've simply created a separate element that you can find right here that you can just simply drop into the position in your text where you want that cutoff point to be. So if in the WordPress settings, you have set it to show the full post and you insert a more tag, it will show everything before this more tag. And of course you can also remove it or place it somewhere else if you wish. The next feature I wanna show you is the support for YouTube playlists. The way this works is with the video element. So if I drop a video in here, then if we have YouTube selected, we can paste a YouTube video link, or we can now also paste a playlist link. For example, if we go to the Thrive Themes channel, you can see we have playlists here. And if I click on this, it will start playing the first video. And I'll just pause that. And what we want is this link right here. So here we have a playlist overview. And this is the link that I'm interested in. And the way you can tell the difference is that, I'll show you this by copying it. And I'll paste it in here. As you can see, this link here says playlist equals. And the view link, so the, the link of this video itself is a a view link or a watch link with a playlist thing attached. So this won't work for the purposes of embedding this playlist. You wanna get the link from here that links directly to the entire playlist. And as you can see, so what happens is we have our playlist here and it says one out of 25 up here in the corner. Now, if I save this, let me just show you what this does on the site. We'll preview this. So here we've got our playlist and again, you can see one out of 25, if you start playing this, it simply plays the first, it shows the thumbnail for and plays the first video in the list. And when you click here, we can see the whole playlist. And so this gives the visitor a chance to choose from the playlist, but also if we look at what happens, if we go to the very end of the video here, let's let this play out. Once the video is done, it automatically loads the next one. So as you can see here, it goes two out of 25 and it plays the next video in that list. Next, if you work with Google Docs, you'll be happy to know that we have made further improvements to the copy pasting from Google Docs. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If I have a document here with, you know, just some text and headings, if I copy this whole thing, I just select it all, copy it, and then I'll paste it in here. What you'll see is that it applies the correct heading. So this is a heading one, this is a heading two. Um, it no longer has this problem where sometimes everything would be bold when you paste it. So this is in the normal font weight and we can change the font weight still. 
and it also does the paragraphs and spacing correctly. So it is still not perfect, but copy pasting from Google Docs has become a lot more reliable now. Then a smaller but still important tweak is that we updated the Twitter character limit. This applies anywhere where you compose a tweet. So that's for social sharing or for the click to tweet element. Here you'll see that there's a character count that again updates as you type, but it's now based on the new 280 character limit rather than the previous 140 character limit for tweets. So we can now all send obnoxiously long tweets. And then a small usability improvement is for the sidebar, for the settings. So if I select the text element here, and I've got a lot of these controls open here, I scroll down, let's say to layout and position, and now I select the button, it will remember the scroll position. So as you can see, it wasn't scrolled back to the very top. Now it's still not perfect because the, the length of the first, if I have the first options expanded here, this isn't always the same length. But as you can see, it just makes it a bit easier. So if I'm working on layout and position on the button and then I switch to text, I'm not as far away from the layout and position option as it was before when it always jumped back to the top. This is something we're still working on though. So we're trying to make sure that all the options you have in the sidebar that don't become overwhelming, especially if you have many of them open. So this is a small improvement we've made. It's kind of a step in the right direction, but we're continuing to work on making it easier to keep track of these options here. All right, that was a quick tour through what has been added and improved in smaller ways in Thrive Architect over the last few weeks. And as always, when there are big improvements and new templates and so on, we present those in separate videos and posts. If you're not subscribed yet to either the YouTube channel or ideally our newsletter, then make sure you do so. So on YouTube, if you subscribe, you will get notified sometimes, right, depending on the algorithms, you will only get notified sometimes when we post something new. But you can go to our website and subscribe to the newsletter there. You'll get access to Thrive University and we will send you emails whenever there is new content, new updates and so on.